This is your daily briefing and I cannot tell you a lie, you're most welcome to it. Normally when I'm preparing these things, um, I go through all sorts of jigs and reels and hoops in order to get the information and then work out what my um, take on it is. And it can be a time consuming process because bear in mind, I'm staring at, you see me looking down at these notes, they've got to say something. But today was a gift, manna from heaven. And I have just two bits of paper because it's one story. And it's the story of the day, it's the story of the week, it's possibly the story of the season. And the only thing that I can say that might take away some of the, 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 the weight, the value to it perhaps, if it turns out to be the case that Paolo Fonseca speaks with forked tongue, if he's a fibber, if he's an unreliable nutcase. We got rid of Mourinho. And I have to be very measured in what I say here because I know people switch off. But we got rid of Mourinho on the basis that it could, be, it could have been a number of things. If you're an anti-Mourinho head, I don't need to hear from you because you don't have anything that actually makes much sense. Um, I've heard it all before. You've not, uh, you've, none of you, not a single one of you has been able to substantiate your claims. Um, the new, newspapers pander to you occasionally and fed you this, that and the other. But the reality was the guy's a serial winner and he doesn't have time for people who aren't part of that process. That's what history has taught us about dealing with the special one. I appreciate who he is on the basis of nothing more than his CV and all arguments counter to that. Uh, and goodness me, they're, they're, it's such an impoverished selection that you have at your disposal. Oh, he's a dinosaur. Oh, he rubs people up the wrong way. He left the club in tatters. You're mindless, and I, I have, I can't, I can't um, exchange with you, because it's like, you know, it's like trying to speak to somebody who thinks the earth is flat. That's the territory that you are in. So this isn't about being a Mourinho fanboy. Um, which is quite often simplistic language I use to describe myself just because I know I'm talking occasionally to rather daft people and the argument constructed needs to be something that they can actually digest. But we got rid of Mourinho and the spin from the club was all this business from Daniel Levy about unfinished business, whatever that meant, unfinished business. Unfinished business and the Tottenham DNA. Now, I've had this conversation with you before and the bright amongst you, which I think makes up 95% of my audience, the bright amongst us, know that when football clubs start talking about the, you know, the Tottenham way, the West Ham way, the Arsenal way, it's invariably at occasions where things are seriously creaking at the edges and about to fall apart, when things are not going very well at all. And I've, I've referenced before West Ham, um, there was fan on fan violence in amongst West Ham supporters. Um, everybody didn't, there was, well, it was everybody, but the general mood coming out of that football club was that was moving out of um, their traditional home um, was a disaster and they'd moved into this carpet remnant world and they were miles away from the pitch and they hated it and they wanted to get back to winning ways and this was the team that won the World Cup and all that jazz. You heard, you heard all the stuff at the time. David Moyes comes in, start winning a few games. West Ham haven't stopped improving since he arrived. And have, can anybody, anybody tell me the last time we heard the phrase, the West Ham way? No, because that talk only comes out when a team is at an unpleasant crossroads. So Tottenham, in absolute world of pain, sacked Mourinho, probably to save money, six days before a cup final, which again shows you the contempt, the unchecked contempt that this investment company has for winning silverware. Sacked him and then went through the most embarrassing process of recruitment ever recorded in history of football. Seven, over 70 days wandering around, knocking on doors, asking people if they wouldn't mind awfully. And they all got the door slammed in their face. And the last man, the last man they managed to pin down, who kind of, I feel, couldn't talk his way out of, out of the thing, was this poor guy that we have now, Perry Perry Pulis. And the football, the football under Perry Perry Pulis, I want that to catch on. Because that's what the West Brom fans used to call them. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Or maybe you did. 
The football under this guy has been dreadful. The football under this guy has not resembled anything that one might if they gave a really big box of crayons to some really bright children and said, can you draw me the Tottenham DNA? It's just been a bit of a mess. Defence was good, defence was bad, cre creativity absolutely out the window. And Harry Kane, you can put it down to what you want, but he looks a, a pale imitation of the, the, the firing on all c cylinders character that we had under Mourinho. When he and Sonny were scoring and making assists and generally putting it together and people were talking about them having a telepathic relationship with each other. That's how good it was. You know, when under that dinosaur, that disruptive destroyer of vibes that was Mourinho, who got us to a cup final that he wasn't allowed to take part in. And we lost, just in case you didn't, you know. I'd like to go through the whole thing. So Fonseca was one of the, you know, the Fons, that guy. You remember him, he was nailed on. He was nailed on, the bookmaker fell through the floor. He was nailed on to be the next Spurs gaffer. Well, he's gone to the papers and he's, 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 he's had his right of reply. Maybe he's a lunatic. Maybe he's an unhinged nut, nut job. Which seems strange because he was, you know, it was all verbally done. His missus had posted on Instagram that um, it was something, I can't remember the thing, but it was like, you know, big changes ahead, all this thing. It was all over bar the, the, the sign on the bottom line. Press hard seven copies. Welcome to, welcome to Hotspur Way. So let's get to it. Paolo Fonseca says Tottenham agreed to appoint him as head coach this summer before new managing director Fabio Paratici pulled out of the deal amid concerns over his attacking style of football. Paolo Fonseca says Tottenham agreed to appoint him as head coach this summer before new managing director Fab Fabio Paratici cancelled the deal over attacking football. We, weren't we told that this the next guy was going to come in? He wasn't going to be like Mourinho. We weren't going to waste all our time focusing on not conceding goals and leaving the back door open. We were told that this was going to be an up and atom. You know, it was going to be like you know watching Zorro in a sword fight. We were going to be box office football. Tottenham spent several months searching for a successor, successor, successor to Mourinho following his sacking in April and held talks with a number of coaches. Conte. Do you remember the Conte thing? Yeah, that didn't happen. Conte didn't happen because that guy isn't a schmuck. After all these other deals failed, North London side moved on to Fonseca and appeared, to set, appeared all set to appoint the former Roma boss after verbally agreeing a two-year deal. However, the move broke down just days after Paratici joined Tottenham and the former Juventus executive initially targeted Gennaro Gattuso. Do you remember those few moments? That was a surreal thing. I mean, we went from Fonseca, who looked to be kind of not a bad deal, to then suddenly, oh, we're now looking at Gattuso. Just absolutely surreal, that was. And then ultimately, which weeks and weeks later, then Nuno got the job. Espirito Santo got the job as Mourinho's appraiser. Reports at the time suggested there were disagreements between Fonseca and Spurs over finances and proposed backroom team issues. And remember, we went through the business there that was also suggested to be an element involving, uh, involved in the Conte deal, that Conte didn't want Mason and King kicking around. Who, I have to say, based upon the fact that our defensive stuff under King wasn't very good, and subsequently, more to the point, he's gone back to being an ambassador of the club. Mason and King, I would argue, nice people, nice people. Let them host your child's birthday party in one of the themed court areas at the, at the stadium. But I would argue that they're not qualified to be top flight coaches. There's no evidence to support that. Lots of, oh yeah, that'd be nice. But it was always a political move with King. It was always a political move. And unfortunately, he didn't have the, the minerals to support the move. 
And that's why he was back introducing people, walking people around the allotments. But Fonseca has now shed light on the subject, claiming it was in fact Paratici's desire for more conservative playing style from a coach that really scuppered the move. But things changed when the new managing director arrived, and this is a quote, but things changed when the new managing director arrived and we didn't agree with some ideas and he preferred another coach. I have some principles. I wanted to be the coach of, great, of the great teams, but I wanted the right project and a club where the people believe in my ideas, my way to play, and this didn't happen with the managing director. And he's talking about Paratici there. It's what the chairman, Daniel Levy, and the sporting director, Steve Hitchin, asked for, to build a team that can play attractive, play attractive and offensive football. And I was ready for that. I cannot be a different way. All my teams will have these intentions. Against the biggest teams, I'm not sending out my teams to defend near their own box. So what I would suggest to you here is that Paratici, who I have um, lost patience with the old, you know, that business, that he's wandering around on the pitch. I won't go down that again, but I'd send him to a payphone, time waster. I had Paratici wandering around, but Paratici, I think Levy, and Hitchens would, agree, Hitchens would agree with anything that Daniel said, was genuinely concerned that he'd made a massive blunder bringing in Mourinho because Mourinho wanted to be the adult in the room and he only wanted to listen to other adults. His relationship with Kane, who's a professional and a world-class player, that, of course, worked. They're still in touch with each other. But the nitwits... The ne'er do wells, the deadwoods, the time wasters, the well, I was going, I could have gone to Liverpool once. All that merchant, all those merchants, they couldn't cope with Mourinho because they're not adults; they're children, they're infants. And I think that the boring fans, the the mob that I described previously, the dinosaurs, oh, they destroyed the club. He's poisoned. Get him out, you know, all those, all those goons, all those mindless people. I think, because, De never forget that Daniel Levy's um, sample um, pool of people that he listens to is extremely small. And the idea that he had, and I go on about them all the time, but these season ticket holders that have been infesting the place forever and believe that they're part and parcel of the, the, the infrastructure of the club, that they're somehow voices of value because I've been coming since I was five. Invariably, as I've said this before, the, the, it's like the running joke about the how can you spot a Yorkshireman. You, you, you know because he's already told you where he's from. And it's the same with the football fans. There's, there's a certain type of fan, there's plenty of them out there, in, especially in the Tottenham ranks, and they do the old, um, you yeah, have been a season ticket holder for uh, 17 years. And after that, their conversation just, there's nothing else there. Because that's their kind of, that's me badge of honour, right? And they, they, generally speaking, don't have a great analytical brain for football. So we've got a position, position now where the Levy and um, Hitchin find themselves listening to these people. Plus, there's the usual white noise on social media. And they go, hang on a minute, Mourinho's not doing the job here at all. Ignoring the fact that he's got us to a, a, a domestic cup final. Ignoring the fact that when he got it right, he got it really, really right. And I'm referring to playing Manchester City, which was a tactical masterclass that blew my mind. Because it was the first time in a long time I watched Spurs look like a world-class side. We've got these guys at the top of the Tottenham tree. And they're saying, no, 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 we need attacking football. That's what fans want. That's what fans uh, want to see. They want to be off their seats and cheering. That's why he brought Bale back, despite the fact that Bale could only now deliver that, because he's now 37 or whatever he is, only deliver that against Marine and Wolfsburger in the Europa League. The absolute, the, the weeds of, of, of club football. So I, I admire Levy wanting to deliver a certain kind of product to the fans. But the reality is that he, he wasn't able to do it because you know everything had moved on. 
So Bale wasn't an option. And Spurs, with the current squad, didn't make it an option for Mourinho. But Paratici, he looked at the squad and totally disagreed with these two and probably sold it to them in language that they could understand, opposed to this, as I've said to you, rather dull, oh, he's a dinosaur, yeah, well, he's a top of DNA. Yes, no, 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 we don't want attacking football. We want co coherent, organised football. And in fact, I believe that if Paratici had been at the club when Mourinho was there, Mourinho may not have been given the boot. So pa Paratici said, no, 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 Fonseca, no, 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 no. You're going to leave the back door open. We'll be in a world of pain really quickly. This, this team doesn't have the structure for that. You've lost Ericsson. Bale is too old. And you're still waiting for Deli Alley to happen. And Paratici probably said, I think Steven Bergvine is a little bit kind of 50-50. He probably knew the truth, which is why he, he, he went, whoa, when, when the Fonz was mentioned. So is, 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 is Fonseca a lie? Or because of the, the mindlessness of the board at this club, is that why we've now got, as I say, Perry Perry Pulis? We've now got a Mourinho Mark II or three. Except for Kane doesn't want to play for this Mourinho. Kane loved playing for the other Mourinho. So did Sonny. You saw the numbers. Don't talk to me. Don't 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 make stuff up. Speak. Deal with me with facts. Well, this is where the grown-ups are. So there was no and and the club the, the players moaning. The, the, the people that were moaning, they have a voice that is not worth consideration because they are halfwits. They've never won anything. They have no desire. They're not men. So we'll wait and see. But this, this, as a backstory goes, is horrific. Absolutely horrific. And if we compare that to Daniel Levy coming out with his emergency um, paper over the cracks video, telling us all that, you know, the Tottenham DNA and all this other rubbish, it's all absolute hokum. The reality is they didn't have a clue what to do. But the job of running Spurs, being the first team coach, was such a poison chalice that the only man left with a chair when the music stopped was Nuno Espirito Santo. And look at his face in the presses. He hates, hates being questioned, hates being there. And he's supposed to be an ambassador for the club. And I don't mean showing you around the allotments. Okay, this might be my longest one yet, but tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I've got. Tell me I've got it wrong. So none of this. Oh, you're boring. You're very negative. Tell me. Tell me how I've got it wrong, and I will. I'll fall to my knees and repent. I beg your forgiveness, but I haven't. <laughs> and I don't think. I don't think Fonseca is a is a lunatic. I think that's pretty much what happened. Good luck. Keep it on them.